Careful, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, be careful. Oh my gosh. Remember, those can take off a hand. Wow. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold. Today I'm here at the Colonian Research Institute in Oviedo, Florida to check out all the turtles that they have. This is actually the third largest collection in the world of preserved turtle specimens. There's thousands and thousands of turtles preserved in here. There's also live turtles that we get to look at and pick up and feed and it's gonna be really fun and exciting. So let's go check it out. Zach, I work here at the Colonian Research Institute. I do a little bit of everything here from turtle care to facility maintenance. We have around 18,000 preserved specimens. This is our front display room. We have an array here. Everything from these are radiated tortoises from Madagascar. This is a wow. South American slider. Their shells are beautiful. Look at those yeah, patterns. Yeah, a lot of these colors. have very uh, intricate patterns. This here is one of the rarest turtle species in the world, an Egyptian tortoise. They're very small. They have very small clutches of maybe one to two eggs. This Not is probably a 400 pound turtle. Things. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah, that animal there was probably 600 pounds. 600, 600 pounds. pounds. That's an alligator snapping turtle, huh? Yeah, probably a 175 pound alligator snapper. Wow. An individual that size would take your hand off of a bit you. What's this one up here? Above That's the a leatherback sea turtle. That's oh, the wow. largest sea turtle in the world. That's a skull of a loggerhead sea turtle. They specialize in eating crustaceans <laughs> and hard things. You can see the mounting that they would have for their jaw muscles. That's why their head's so big. This is the second largest sea turtle in the world, but look at the size of the skull. Oh wow. These guys are strictly vegetarians eating seagrass and algae. Whereas a turtle with a shell smaller like this, a loggerhead, would have a head like that. Oh my gosh. Breeding crabs and crustaceans. Mm -hmm. This is our cryptid ear room. There's yeah. just turtles we're, upon we're turtles. Oh um, my gosh. Organizing this room. It's a bit of a mess. Wow. But, uh, the whole room is just full of boxes and piles of turtle parts. <laughs> Check out that room. Oh my gosh, yeah. I can already see how full it is. What's this room? This is the tortoise room. If someone comes, they can look up in our database the turtles they're looking for, and right next to it will say, you know, been such and such in the cryptid ear room. So people can come straight up here. Okay, this is the turtle I need. Take it down, get into the specimens, examine them. This would be a scoop. Underneath is the bone. So this is basically, it's almost like a fingernail type. Uh, tissue. A lot of people think that the shells are just hard and the turtle can't feel them. The turtle, there's tissue in between the scutes and the bone with nerve endings, so anytime you tap a turtle or touch it, it can feel. When a turtle is discovered, in order for it to be protected or acknowledged, it needs to have a type. So it has to have a holotype for that species when it's discovered. Without that, you can't protect the species if you don't have the type to show what the species is. Is a holotype kind of like an example of that species? That's the example that's collected from the field and set okay. as the type for the animal. And if we describe the species by collecting examples of them, we can help protect them. Yes, exactly. This is a Yucatan box turtle. This was given to Dr. Pritchard about 30 years ago by Anders Rodin. This turtle's uh, estimated to be between 50 and 80 years old. Unfortunately, wow. later, earlier in the year, we discovered her with her foot missing. Aww. So something took off her foot, probably a raccoon or something. Oh my gosh. And we just had to stitch it up, but she still gets along fine. She hunts down uh, worms and bugs. Look at the little feet. I love them. Is this their little hide area and then they can escape? Yeah, this is they can get out they there. They hibernate in. It's full of leaf litter that they can burrow into for the cold. Oh, okay. So this is all all strictly leaf litter. And if you stick your hand in here, if they dig down, they can get nice and warm. We're doing a little tiny stream up there and it's going to go down and since we hit like um, a pipe there, we're just gonna have we're just gonna have the water go over that and then into like a little space. And then what it. habitat is this gonna be for? Uh, this is gonna be for box turtles. Awesome! Mm -hmm. Look at the patterns on their this shells. This one's cool. a girl, I think. Yeah. Yep. This one's a girl. How can you tell? 
because the, the tail is shorter <laughs> oh, and the male is longer. Thanks girls for building this great new pond for the box turtle to have it at. Yeah. They're going to love it. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. How about that guys, huh? some red foot tortoises. These are some from northern foot. South America. Oh look at he's coming right to you. That's uh, an older female there. Oh. Well, they're they very they're very inquisitive. Uh, these are one of the best pet turtles especially oh for gosh. the uh, weather conditions here in Florida. Here we have a Mexican giant musk turtle. Oh look at him. Oh, this is a female cute. giant musk Stereotripus oh. tripercatus. Did it just hiss? Yeah. They have strong crushing jaws for crustaceans and other invertebrates and stuff. They'll mm -hmm. also eat other turtles. You don't want to get a bite by this. This would make me bleed pretty dang good. Oh my gosh, it looks like it. Sulcatas are known for being an aggressive tortoise species against each other. Hmm. Um, sometimes some of the bigger ones are even aggressive towards me. I'll get in and they'll come and ram me or try yeah. to ram me. With their shell? Yeah, with their shell. That's how males uh, fight. They have two ghoulers, mm -hmm. scutes that come out and they'll actually ram each other and try to rip each other's necks open and stuff oh, with, the, wow. with, the, with the ghoulers. That's brutal. <laughs> See the ghoulers? <laughs> yeah. This is what they fight with. How much does that one weigh, do you think? Um, probably 40, 50 pounds, maybe. Wow, and how long do these live? Uh, they can live over 100 years. Oh my gosh. Buddy. Listen, buddy. You like the red fingernail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that could be. You want my fingernails? They see the red. They like that color. Yeah, they, they love painted fingernails yeah. and toenails. Oh, it's, no. They're after your fingernails. It's yeah, the high business. <laughs> my name's Ed Ballou. I'm with Aquascape. I am the vice president of field research and sustainability. This is a constructed wetland filter. So what we have here is we have a water distribution system underneath all of this. This is oh, actually wow. four feet deep. Oh, so wow. underneath all of that, if I take the lid off, it goes down four foot all the way down into the bottom. Mm -hmm. And what we have is we have this uh, a section of uh, what we call aqua box down in the bottom that's going to distribute the water out nice and evenly along the bottom. Yep. It's also going to act as a sedimentation chamber. So when you have, we have our water coming in, in the corner over there from our pump that's located in that far corner. So what we're going to have is we're going to have that water discharge in the bottom. Sediments actually fall out. So any of the, uh, the large uh, waste from the turtles is going to settle out. Right. We could access it on a yearly basis. Basis. Right through here? We take that little lid off, we could put a pump in there and we could discharge all the solid waste. Oh then wow. The, the water's gonna flow up through different layers of uh, rocks and gravel. Yeah. And that's actually home to different types of microorganisms um, and beneficial bacteria, which are actually gonna break down the rest of the waste that's mm -hmm. generated from the fish as well as the turtles, detoxify everything, and then it re enters the system. This is the tank that they spent the majority of their oh lives in. Oh my gosh. Right here. So How many are there? Three? four giant four. snapping turtles and they all kind of, you can actually see where they wore out the ground from just walking around. Oh, and that, yeah. was the, that was the concrete that was causing their sores. Oh. Yeah. So this was their old home and now you've seen their new home. They always hang in here. Oh my gosh, this thing's crazy. <laughs> just grab it. Careful, Greg! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, be careful. Oh my right. gosh. Remember, those can take off a hand. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> How right heavy is that? 60 pounds. What? Yeah, look they're at, heavy. I'm gonna guess. Look at how solid it looks. Oh, they're tanks. Uh, uh, Greg's loving this. <laughs> yeah, you see why I built them a home? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wanted to come visit them. They're, they're your buddies. Totally. So what are you doing? You're giving us a demonstration? Of how fast they bite. Ooh. Man. <laughs> I could feel that power. Wow. So you, oh yeah. See that on the tongue? Looks like a little, a little worm. Yeah, they use it to lure fish. Oh. Sneaky. The and then the fish goes in the mouth and that's the end of it. There she, there goes. she goes. How cool is that? <laughs> and she's gone. 
So it's two o'clock, we started at 9.30. This is an eight by 11 aquascape ecosystem pond. And we had come, a lot of these guys had come here last year, last year and we built a pond for the four snapping turtles yeah. that Dr. Pritchard got from Ross Allen in 1969, That's I can right. see from his book. Yeah. Um, but when I came back here to visit them, I realized that you didn't have a pond at your personal residence. Right. And so this is the pond for your personal residence. The birth of a new waterfalls, everybody. <laughs> We have a beautiful pond over there for the alligators, but he didn't have any place to enjoy it. You know, he's getting a little bit up there and he's got a little bit of um, Alzheimer's and dementia. So we wanted, he would literally sit for hours over there watching the turtles, but they were, he can't stay there by himself. Yeah. So this is his house. He can stay on his patio and go back in before in between. So we're going to fence this up because you need to, if you're going to have turtles, you need to have it fenced because mm -hmm. they, they want, if anybody deserves to enjoy this, it's Dr. Pritchard because this man literally traveled the world with his dedication for turtles. So yeah. for me as a kid who grew up reading his books, mm -hmm. to be able to come here last year and build up an awesome pond for those alligator snapping turtles, and this year a personal reflecting pond. This is very similar to your, your pond, so you're, yeah. you, you're going to start to enjoy. Yeah. This is living the aquascape lifestyle. Yeah. This is what aquascape wants to do. We want to see more people actually enjoy this. Because this sound... It's so relaxing. <laughs> that people will spend hours and hours away, hours next to their water feature, let all yeah. the stress melt away. So this is the perfect little pond for the pitchers to enjoy their turtles and the sound and relaxation in their retirement years. What a cool experience that I got to come here today. I never even knew this place was here and it's essentially basically like in my backyard because I only had to drive half an hour to get here. So. I'm really thankful to Greg for inviting me. Thankful to Dr. Pritchard for letting us all come here and experience this today. What a cool thing. And I'm glad I got to bring you guys with too and show you some turtles and some cool turtle artifacts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, until next time, stay gold.